In this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate regression coefficients. We'll calculate the slope coefficient, or beta hat sub 1, and the constant, or the intercept, beta hat sub 0. And we'll use two different methods depending upon what kinds of information we have available to us. We can use the formula in the middle to calculate the slope and the intercept if we have access to five numbers. We need the mean and standard deviations of both our independent and our dependent variables, our x and our y variables, and we need the correlation coefficient of those two variables. If we have those five pieces of information, the calculation is relatively straightforward and you can use a handheld calculator. If you have the raw data and are expected to calculate these same regression coefficients, you're better off using a spreadsheet and using a formula similar to the one in the right-hand box. Another way of saying that um, formula for beta hat sub 1 is, in the numerator we have the covariance of x and y, and in the denominator we have the variance of x. So anytime somebody talks about the ratio of the covariance of x and y to the variance of x, you're calculating your beta hat sub 1. Let's go ahead and look at the simple problem with a handheld calculator. Let's say we have all the means and standard deviations of our two variables, and we have the correlation coefficient. Let's go ahead and calculate uh, this, uh, our beta hat sub 1, our slope coefficient, using these five numbers. So our beta hat sub 1 is going to be equal to the correlation coefficient, 0.4543, multiplied by the ratio of the standard deviation of y to the standard deviation of x. In this case, that's the $31,925.88 divided by 3.49. And that's equal to 0.4543 times 9,147.8166. And that's equal to approximately, I'm going to round this number, $4,156. So our beta hat sub 1 coefficient, the interpretation is that when we see an increase in education of one year or one unit, we see an expected or average increase in income of approximately $4,156. Let's go ahead and calculate our slope coefficient, beta hat sub 0. Once we've solved for beta hat sub 1, we can use that information. Now we're going to plug in the mean of y, which in this case is $38,779.52, minus the mean of um, education 13.96 times our beta hat sub 1 which is 4156 I'm rounding here but I didn't round when I did the calculation which is equal to this value And finally, this is equal to minus $19,236.189. So let's go ahead and build our full model. We, we are now saying, based on our model, that predicted values of income, notice the hat over income, are equal to approximately minus $19,236. Plus our beta hat sub 1, which is 4,156 times education. We can go ahead and calculate predicted values based on this model. So let's go ahead and calculate two predicted values. I'm going to calculate a y hat, so the hat again says it's an estimate of y, conditional upon x being equal to 10. And that's going to be minus 19,000. 236 plus 4,156 times 10, or $22,339. Again, round it. That is to say, we expect an average income of $22,339 for a group of people with 10 years of education. Let's go ahead and calculate one more predicted value when our x is equal to 20. And we'll just use the same formula. But 
but this time we'll multiply it by 20 and we get a value of 63,856. Now these two values fall on our regression line. So one thing we could do is create a scatter plot with um, our raw data, our XY data, income and education in two dimensional space plot these two points and connect them with the line and we can extend the line a little further on either side if we like. Let's go ahead and see what that graphic looks like. So here you can see the maroon or red dots are my raw data points. The blue dashed line represents my regression line and I figured this out by calculating for x equals 10 and x equals 20 in my y hat and I used those pairs of data and then connected them with that line. So this is a pretty good method, pretty easy to use. You'll certainly see this on one of my tests. It's very, it will give you these five pieces of information and ask you to calculate beta hat sub 1, beta hat sub 2. Write out the model as I've done here. So here's my model over here. And then to interpret this model. Now, let's look at the interpretation one more time, but quickly. So what does the constant or intercept represent? It's the expected or average value of income for people that have zero years of education. And you can see it's a negative number and doesn't really make any sense. It's often typical that when I use a value of x that doesn't actually exist within the range of my data, I can get nonsensical um, outcomes like this. So this particular uh, coefficient doesn't have a great interpretation. I am, however, interested in the slope coefficient, which we've already described. For a one unit increase in education, we see an average increase in income of slightly over $4,000. To be a little more precise about this, when we see a change in education of one year of education, we expect to see an average increase in, of income of approximately $4,156. So we're going to now switch over to a spreadsheet and look how to use that other formula, the covariance of x and y divided by the variance of x, to calculate beta hat sub 1 in the context of a spreadsheet. So here we are in our Google spreadsheet. Uh, you can see I've got this up and running. I've entered all the data and I've even gone ahead and made the calculations. So what we're really going to do is just look at how the formulas work. Um, you can see I've repeated the uh, formula here in case you need to see it, but it's real simple. It's the covariance of x and y divided by the variance of x. So let's go through our data. Uh, my first, my column A is just an ID number. You see that I have 25 cases. Column B is my independent or my x variable, and it has values uh, rate, you know, of 13, 15, 14, and so forth, number of years of education. My third column, column C, is my income, and you can see it's measured to the nearest dollar. And then I start getting into the hard work of this problem. Down at the bottom of column B and C, I've calculated the means and standard deviations, and I've done that using built-in functions into my Google spreadsheet. So I'm going to click on cell B28. And then if you look in the upper left corner, you can see I'm using the average function to average. And I'll use the F2 key. It'll actually highlight the area that I'm averaging. I'm calculating the average of B3 to B27, that is all the income values. Directly below that, I have the number 3.49. And now that I've highlighted the column and clicked on F2, you can see that that's going to calculate for the same range of data, the standard deviation. I then copied these two cells to the cells next to it so I could get respectively the average income and the standard deviation of income. Once that's done I can start calculating my deviations and then my covariance. Column D is simply the covariance. So here you can see that I'm using um, these dollar signs which represent absolute addresses which I've looked at in other videos. If you don't understand that please go out and Google absolute versus relative addresses in spreadsheets and figure out what that means. But you can see here when I hit F2 that I'm taking the difference of the value in cell B3 and the value of cell in B28, which is the mean of all those numbers. And I've simply copied that down this row so that I'm taking the difference between each value and its mean. That's my x minus x bar part of this. Over here in column E, I'm doing the same thing, but this time I'm doing it looking at the difference between the mean of my um, dependent variable and its uh, actual observed value. In column F, I'm multiplying these two numbers together. That is, I'm taking the minus 0.96, multiplying it times 6.219.98, and I'm getting one part of my covariance. I simply copy this column 
or this cell value to all these cells and then at the bottom I'm using another spreadsheet function to sum up all the values above it. That value, that 1,216,283.02, is my numerator. That's the, that's the covariance of x and y. As you can tell, the denominator is calculated a little bit differently, and that's done in column G. I'm taking each one of my deviations of each observed x from the mean of x, and I'm squaring it. And I do that for every number. And then down here at the bottom, again, I'm using the sum function to add those up. That's my variance of um, x. Now, I'm doing my work for my spreadsheet down here in this red box. I'm just copying my covariance and my variance. And then I'm calculating beta hat sub 1. And very simply, I'm taking the ratio of the covariance of x and y to the variance of x. And I'm getting my 4,151.7. Notice that this number is a little different than we got in the hand calculation, but that's because the spreadsheet is keeping greater precision and there's less rounding error as I go. Coming down to the cell below, label for beta hat sub zero or B sub zero, you can see I'm taking my, my, uh, my mean value of income minus the product of the mean value of education times beta hat sub one, and I'm getting my predicted value. I'm getting my uh, interceptor constant beta hat sub zero. Finally in the blue box um, I've picked some values 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20 to calculate predicted values. I picked those numbers because when I made the graphic in this particular spreadsheet uh, Google automatically or by default picked those values for my x-axis. And Let's just go ahead and look in this first cell. You can see that the formula that I've typed in here is going to take my intercept and add that to the product of beta hat sub 1 times 4, the value in cell H31. And I'm doing this for every one of these values down here. I really only need two of these, so when I did this by hand, I calculated when x equals 10 and x equals 20. And with those two points, I could plot them on this chart and connect them by a line. I'll be honest with you, one of the limitations of the Google Spreadsheet is it doesn't produce the trend line on the graphic very easily. There are some ways you can trick Google into producing something like this line, but it just takes more time than it's worth in my opinion. So what I would do with this particular graphic is I would download it and uh, then draw the line in with some kind of drawing package and then put that graphic into my report or into my homework assignment and turn that in. Well, there you go. There's our introduction on how to calculate regression coefficients for a bivariate regression in two ways. One way when you have five numbers, the means and standard deviations of your independent and dependent variable, and the correlation of those two variables. Simple hand calculation with a calculator. And then the other way is to calculate these um, coefficients by hand, uh, working from the raw data, in which case you're much better off using a spreadsheet. Plus, you can use the spreadsheet to visualize the scatter plot, which might be helpful to you. As usual, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to contact me, and I'll do my best to answer them.